said, well, shit. But the nigga's dead, though, son. He was like, you know, he put in me the indomitable spirit, which made me, I said, it's five, six people, seven people in here who can carry on this. I know there will have to be some resources outside in grassroots organizations, in technical schools and other places where we will find the talent for these things. And he put that into me because at that point, I had to train with the Cubans. They told me what the deal was. They say you always find the high point. Shoot down. Don't be finding how to get past the infrared and everything. So I was ready. I was like, fuck all the rest of them niggas. I'm just going home. And I'm going to put this shit down. But sign convinced me that, you know, ain't nobody else nowhere. You can talk shit all about them niggas because all you want to because you done grew up around them all your life. But you ain't gonna find no more Africans more brilliant than you motherfuckers here. You niggas know about all this crap and shit. And so, from that point, with that international experience, with actually talking to brothers from the continent, and it was it wasn't just Sign Shivanga from Zimbabwe. Then it was a large Topa from a, 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 a Liberia, with, with with the new democratic movement for Liberia. This nigga here, God is a black woman. Every one of you niggas out there come in there right away. So that's the only way your ass know that it's a God. Is the fact that your ass was born, you came from somewhere out of somebody nuts that they just thought about your ass mm -hmm. and got horny. And then your ass was here. <laughs> so, all right, brother Tut, uh, before you continue to go off the subject. Uh, what's the connection no, no, with no, other no, African no. leaders the other and African how are we going to use this connection with these African leaders to pull together the Pan-African Lodge structure? Well, we have to realize that just as our elders here in America believe in just being able to take a shit next to the white man in the toilet, mm -hmm. that they gave up every vestige of nationhood for that ability. Mm -hmm. So we're faced with the same thing on the continent. Brother Dos Santos with his petroleum engineering degree from Russia has been able to maintain himself as a petroleum producing country and therefore able to produce the mechanizations of war to the degree whereby which he can uphold his territorial sovereignty. So we deal with him first. Mugabe done woke up in the last three, four years, and so he's doing his thing now. So we deal with him. We deal from a position of strength. That's what we have to understand as African people. You go to where the strongest point is, and union. You align yourself with that weak, that strongest point of ourselves. And it's been strange because, as you mentioned, the evolution of my experience with African leaders that started with Fidel. Yeah, he likes skinned that mother. Some people say he emailed you, but he's the realest motherfucker on the planet. No doubt. No doubt. Anybody can go there right now. You 18 to 30, you want a degree, you want something to do with yourself, go to Cuba. You can get a degree to be a doctor for free. Yeah. I sit seven kids down there myself. So, my idea from that point, you know, they have a better understanding of who we are as African people than we do, the Cubans do. It's amazing. It's, you know, you look at Shea and everybody wears the buttons, everybody wears the shirt with Shea on it, but nobody understands this man fought in the Congo. He put that shit on the line, shaved his beard and all that shit. Went through the airport with a fake name and shit just to drop down and fight for your black ass. We can understand that. But now, after being released from prison and making the connection with the Cubans, coming back and through them making the connection with the Angolans and independently making connection with the Congolese, Zimbabweans, Mozambicans, uh, 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 the Southern People's Liberation Army in Sudan, led by John Garang. Uh, uh, Sister Crystal's 
stepfather is a member of the Romo tribe of Ethiopia, and they are a tribe of 25 million stretching from southwest Ethiopia down through Kenya and Tanzania through the Rift Valley, all the way down to Zimbabwe, their ancestral totem being the deer or the horned ancestor animal in the form of the giraffe all the way down to the wildebeest and Thompson's gazelle, which is named after a cracker, by the way. So from this point, my understanding of the African continent and the leaders of the continent was based on my meeting people from the various countries. You ain't gonna meet the president or all them motherfuckers. My understanding of the personality of a Ghanaian. My understanding of the personality of a Nigerian. My understanding of a, the personality of a Southern African, which is a straight, you know, we got the dirty, dirty, the dirty, dirty in America. But nigga talk about the dirty, dirty, the dirty, dirty, over this motherfucker, would it kill a hundred thousand crackers and leave a blade in the street? Nigga, you can't even imagine that shit. Because your heart can't contain it. Your, car, your heart can't maintain the thought of a hundred thousand white men dead laying at your feet. You never even in your wildest marijuana fantasy thought about that shit. No matter how many times he beat your ass and killed your brother. You still never sat down and concentrated long enough on the idea of a hundred thousand of them being dead, goddammit, because if you did, they would be dead. Mm -hmm. All right. So Brother Tut, um, what other African organization are we, or Pan-African organization, are we trying to link up mm -hmm. with? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, we have all these different organizations around here. Man, it seems like everybody been dying off, though. It used to be the New African People's Organization. It used to be, you know, a lot of other groups. But i say this much, and me and Sister Alvin and I have been going over this. I look to make an alliance with those African organizations that can maintain, just by you looking at the facade of them, a high level of thought those temples, those aspects of conscious thought that are being brought back forth again that are based on African spiritual principles of spiritual cultivation that go through particular rituals and rites that you can look at through his advertisement and know, you know, when some motherfuckers say some meditation shit, when some folks say some African spiritualism, when folks say some healing, when folks say some drumming, you know, these are the type of things that you want to draw towards. But it's a lot of bullshit in there still. So, like I said, I, I, you know, I got over trying to save 50 million African people. So we draw into a certain core of people. You're looking in the eyes of two or three people in the whole organization. You're trying to say, do these people have the technical ability? So how much people do we actually need to get this thing off the ground? I would say from America, before we get to the continent, 50. All right. And what kind of transportation are we planning on using? Because we, we discussed the we, plane. We talked about the boat at first and we changed plans. Seaplane. Seaplane. The best method of transportation on the African continent is the seaplane. So are we planning on financing the seaplane and keeping up the maintenance? And we obviously need a pilot. And we need someone that speak, we need someone that speak multiple language. Well, I think that we have the multiple language thing between amongst ourselves. I'm also Portuguese. That's where we're going. And they need English speaking teachers. They won't. They, they need English speaking motherfuckers there to teach English. Mm -hmm. That's why the door wide open mm -hmm. with some drawers hanging down from the corner. You know, like come hither. <laughs> Alright, brother Tut, uh, we're about to wrap this up. Uh, we're running out of time. Uh, this, uh, anything you'd like to say before we uh, wrap it up? Um, yeah. What about the sisters? Would you like to... Uh, 
I grabbed it. See, I was going for it. I was going for it. I was going for it. The difference between everything that's happened before today in the African Revolution has been the simple fact that the matriarchal system has not been reinstituted. So, I mean, I got daughters and I was raised by a woman. A woman, an African woman, Little May Scarborough, a Gullah woman, a Geechee woman, taught me how to hunt, taught me how to fish, picked me up at the snake, bit me, you know. All of these things that made me a man and make me an African and make me be able to get up in the morning and work hard, you know, those things from my childhood that gave that to me, she gave me. So there is never a disrespect for the female species because that's what I experienced. I put it in my daughters. Whatever degree I deal with it in those sisters, those queens who are my age equal. I look to that example that made me and, 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 and try to see that in them. And if it's not there, negotiate, you know, to see what type of media you can get between what you've experienced as an African woman and what is actually there. And always respecting that. Can you just imagine the process of somebody being born inside of you, bro? I mean, have you ever thought about that shit for any extended period of time? Sisters, do you have any questions about the lodge or Anything for Brother Tuck most? Let's see, we're looking at the map of Africa right here. This is what we're trying to recapture. We're trying to get back home. We're trying to get back to building our own nation, using our, all our strength, energy, everything we have to focus on building something for ourselves in our own land and stop wasting our time and building a white man's luxury life in America while we starve and die and live in poverty. So that's what it's all about right there. Black Africa like Sheikh and to Diop. Mm -hmm. That was it. Black Africa right here. Talk about all the natural resources and the federal state of Black Africa. <coughs> And from the uh, mm -hmm. the African origin of civilization, myth or reality? Mm -hmm. Definitely reality. Mm -hmm. Based on radiocarbon dating, which is the actual proof and existence of us being the first human beings on Earth. All right, that's it. See ya. Revolutionary camp signing off. Black power. You got a minute left there, nigga. Shit. What that shit say? A minute and 32 seconds now. Now you seen things. That's, that's done, man. <laughs> Revolution Cabin signing off. Wait a minute, man. That shit is still counting now. Zero, zero minutes so it's in second mode. Focus on Africa. Right. That's what we're going to focus on. We're we yeah. going out right there. We're going we gonna to focus on West Africa right there. We're focusing on genocide. <laughs> West Africa is going to be it right there. <laughs> the privileged position of West Africa.